Uncertainty has been the nemesis of supply chain planning since the beginning of supply chain planning. I want to use the next 10 minutes to talk about how we tackle this and how we think there's a new set of tools that we can use to rein in some of this in ways we could never do before. So with that, I want to start by honoring one of the best jazz musicians of our time. Miles Davis is amongst a lot of great things that he did. One thing he was famous for was his ability to take uncertainty and the creative chaos of jazz and translating it into harmony. And he did that exceptionally well. And I quote, it's not the notes you play as you're trying to transcend into harmony from chaos. It's the notes you don't play. That's important. And I think this is highly pertinent, not just for music and jazz. I think this pertains to all mathematical systems, especially those that are intrinsically tied to human systems. And supply chain is a perfect example of that. So how are supply chain planners and operators dealing with volatility today. Clearly it's not by not playing the notes that they decide. If I had a dollar for every time an executive told me that, hey, I think my supply chain planning teams are over touching plans, be it on the demand side where of the thousands of demand adjustments with a lot of human bias that are getting made every week, it wouldn't be inaccurate to say over 50% of those, and we measured this across multiple customers actually go the wrong way. They're actually more inaccurate after the changes than they were before. And when you talk about production and materials, the whole notion of a production frozen window is a misnomer. People are constantly breaking into production schedules, a huge impact on OEE. And of course, they're responding to a lot of the dependent volatility coming in from demand. And then finally, if you look into logistics, uh, there's a whole lot of overtouching going on there. People are, when in doubt, hitting expedite. And very often you find 25 to 35% of your expedites are rogue expedites. They fly first class and stuff goes and sits on a shelf. And all of this adds up. Financially, the business case is is kind of pretty big if you kind of take all of these into account but the question here is why planning teams don't jump out of bed every day thinking i'm going to go change a plan of course they're trying to respond to the chaos around them so what's the invisible agent that's that's creating this environment for them to be operating this way deterministic rules-based planning systems were designed to do certain things and certain things well they will take what we call your consensus demand signal, treated as the gospel truth. And of course, based on a variety of rules, which are sometimes very, very aged, lead times, capacity, across your entire supply network will propagate that demand signal into what becomes your inventory, deployment, production materials plan. Now, all of that is great, but when you hit system-wide volatility from demand and supply, and it's hitting you from all sides, and your arm, which is rules-based, deterministic planning systems, that leads to a tremendously high volume of noise. The noise to signal ratio of your planning signals, on the basis of which all operators are taking action and playing all the notes that they have to or shouldn't, the noise to signal ratio is extremely high. And whether it's your planning book data, which is your demand and your supply projections, or if you're taking the trouble of configuring alerts in SAP, the volume of alerts is through the roof. It's not uncommon to find hundreds of thousands of alerts showing up every week. And we've actually compressed this volume by 95% with zero information loss. There's a whole lot of noise in there. The sad part is, as a result of this noise, you know, 80% of the time or more of your planning teams is spent kind of deciding what's real and what's not. And it's within this haze that they end up playing all the wrong notes it's no fault of this, it's just the level of noise is extreme. So that brings me to the suite of products that Noodle AI has brought to market. The fundamental thing that we do is we denoise your planning system. We start with your demand signal and working with both internal and external data sets, we will give you the best hierarchical demand forecast across your network across all SKUs, across all locations. And of course, give you the slice from a sales perspective, from a supply chain perspective, from a brand product perspective. Then we go upstream into your supply execution and where we deal with your deployment signals, your inventory signals, your uh, production signals, denoise those. But on the basis of these denoise signals, we then proceed to kind of give you the right predictions of risk that exists in terms of overages and shortages and, and so forth, and give planning teams the right recommendations in terms of what adjustments they need to make so they're hitting the right notes. And on the basis of this platform of very valuable denoise signals, we then put Athena Insights on top where it's you know our take on BI on AI, where you have a rich repository of information and you can slice and dice it and view it in whatever way you find. Uh, highly pertinent for people that are at the front end of digital transformations trying to set up control towers that actually give you the right signals. And powering all of this, since it's all about lifeblood is data, 
is the enterprise AI platform, which manages everything from data ingestion and our integrations to the pre-processing, post-processing of that information, all the way to feeding it back into your systems after it's been processed. I want to take a quick view of how different this is from your existing planning systems. It's a radically different approach from the ground up. Traditional planning systems take a certain slice of data and give you a base plan, but as exceptions show up and volatility and uncertainty hits, it's not uncommon for you to find hundreds of thousands of signals that have very little intelligence in them and your planners are drowning in clerical work. We, on the other hand, on the basis of augmenting those data sets with a wide variety of internal and external data sets that get converted to input features for our models that feed our models, are then really unpacking the physics of your supply chain. And we do this training over three years of your data history with a whole lot of real-time signals coming in as well. But we are constantly sensing patterns across demand and supply. We are then, through those denoise signals, predicting what your biggest risks are and finally recommending actions to planners that actually work. A quick look under the hood. This is an example of one skew DC combination. Of course, you will have hundreds of thousands of these uh, in a complex supply chain. But what you see is a noodle prediction at 12 weeks with a 12 week lag. That means the yellow line is a, a prediction that was made 12 weeks prior to that point. So if you're predicting something, a dip in Jan or a dip in May, it happened three months prior. That prediction was made three months prior. And a couple of things are ha happening here, which I want to highlight. First, we're pretty good at tracking actuals. And if you compare this with a deterministic system, they would be missing most of this in, in all the noise. And we're predicting actual risk of a fill rate. So in this particular case, you know, the value is being driven through recovery of lost sales. We're predicting a dip in May. And not only that, the inference engines are being able to unpack what is causing that prediction. So is it coming from a demand imbalance or a supply imbalance? And finally, given that we can understand what is driving that risk, it allows us to then give a very targeted set of recommended actions to the planning organization so they can make the right adjustments, do the right things, and play the right notes and not play what they don't have to. There are about five components in the stack that light up Athena and, and the suite. Uh, the heart of the stack, of course, is the supply chain AI models, and we call them deep probabilistic decision machines, and we can talk more about it in a you know, subsequent session, but they're these are the, the AI models that are constantly sensing, predicting, and, and recommending action. But to light up the supply chain AI models, this entire stack has been purpose-built for speed and scale. What you don't want to do is experiment on this. It's taken us four years to build this, so you don't have to spend four years. It's built to work. All the way from data ingestion from your environment, your ERP and your advanced planning systems. And we work across not just APO, but IBP and a whole slew of best of breed concurrent planning systems in just data. And that feeds EAIP, which is the underlying platform. There's a wide variety of techniques and tooling on top for the constant monitoring of performance. Because in a non-stationary world like supply chain, the data is very, very non-stationary. And it's not just about lighting up a model. It's about making sure the models don't drift as things change. And then finally, all of this feeds the control tower, which is the user interface for executives as well as planners. This feeds back into the workflow of the planning community in, in your organization. And most importantly, it feeds back into your enterprise cloud environment as well. We are an advanced technology partner with AWS, and it's been a great channel for us to share this technology so with that, um, talking about purpose built for speed, it's all about speed to value. We take about three months to start putting value on the board for you. And in the case of the applications we just talked about, the value is derived from loss sale recovery and fill rates. It's very easy for a $10 billion company to see improvements in fill rates a percent on a $10 billion company. Of course, it's $100 million in the bank at very high contribution margins. Reducing inventory 10 to 15% conservative number, but you know, you add to that, not just the overages that you are helping reduce, uh, but also the write-offs and, and the obsolescence and the destruction costs that, that go with it. Really getting a control on your rogue expedites, uh, stuff that gets expedited, but needn't have notes that shouldn't have been played. Last but not the least, I want to talk about the force multiplier and all of this. It's, it's really kind of improving the experience and the productivity of the planning teams. If you are at the front end of a digital transformation, talk to us. We have over 200 people who are jumping out of bed every morning, excited about solving the heaviest problems in supply chains. Reach out to us. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks.